we found a wrecked Tesla Model S that had fallen off of a transit truck. So the thing that fascinates, I think, me and potentially the audience, your connection to Tesla actually started before you even got into the repair of the vehicles or into this project. Tell us about uh, the connection early on in your career. Yeah, it goes back to, what was that, 10th grade biology course, Diane Catron, AP Bio. She put on a, I think it was a video, an early video of the Tesla Roadster. From that moment, I just, it clicked for me. That's, that's the future. Mm. So actually, we, we had built the model that you see in this video, the wooden portion of it we had constructed. We found a wrecked Tesla Model S that had fallen off of a transit truck. And uh, that's exactly what we were looking for. We had planned to chop the whole body off anyhow. And so we got it at a good discounted price. And this was a car that I'm assuming they would not have been able to put back on the road. This would have been deemed a parts car at yeah. auction. Okay. Fortunately, it didn't receive a salvage title, but it, it would have. I mean, it was the whole top was smashed in. We just intercepted it before the salvage title, I suppose. What we did is, is we hacked the whole top of that body off and put our wooden model onto it perfectly. We had one issue. We had to narrow the entire wooden model about two and a half, three inches. So we took it off, chopped it down, put it back together. And uh, there came a point where investors kept asking and, and curious people who would show friends, family, what is, what's your relationship with Tesla? How, how are you going to scale this? Mm. They thought, well, uh, we don't know yet. They don't know about this. This is just a dream, a vision of ours. So this was kind of middle of, of COVID days. Me and my brother in Santa Fe, we'd gotten to a point with the vehicle. We thought maybe it's a good time to, to try and present this to Tesla, see what they would think. And uh, I took a journey up north to Boulder, Colorado. In Boulder, I was hoping to kind of stumble across Kimball, see if I might be able to show him some images of what we built so far. Mm. And right in the middle of COVID, the restaurant was really, really struggling up there in Boulder. His first restaurant, The Kitchen. Now we're talking about Kimball Musk, folks. This is Elon's brother. Elon's brother, yes. So I, I went in for a meal, had this delicious meal, and I hear the manager describing to the table next to me how difficult it was in that time for them to keep staff, to keep cooking this food for their customers. I figured, you know what, maybe I can be helpful in this moment. It seems like they could really use some help. And I offered to roll up my sleeves and got to work peeling potatoes, washing dishes, being helpful in any way I possibly could. And I fell in love with cooking in the process. It ended up being an incredibly beneficial experience because the heart of our vehicle is the kitchen. To see an industrial kitchen, the way those facilities operate, the team, the equipment was profound. And I wanted to take that learning and integrate that into our kitchen design. So my time there up in Boulder, I ended up cooking for Kimball uh, multiple times a week. He'd bring his family through. He just opened a new restaurant in Austin. So we've got one now in the original in Boulder, one in Denver, one in Chicago, and one in Austin. But my whole time there, I, I was focused on my work in the kitchen and I wanted to have the vehicle be drivable before presenting it to them. I met Elon for Kimball's 50th birthday, he flew in. We spent a whole week preparing that meal and then four hours cooking the day of Friday night. Uh, at the end of the meal, Elon and Kimball came back to the kitchen and most of the staff had left. But fortunately, I was still there and, you know, greeted Kimball and his big brother, Elon, thank you for joining us this evening. And I wanted so badly in that moment to show them some renderings, some images. Right. But I refrained out of respect for a very special moment they were having Kimball's 50th, wanted them to have their family time, and I didn't want to present it until it was drivable. So that then brought me to Gruber. Okay. To get this thing driving. Mm. And uh, by the way, Marcus works at Gruber Motor Company and is currently working on all of the EVs that we have at Gruber Motor Company. And if for some reason Elon is watching, we have a very motivated designer here that would love to show you this tiny home as a potential for developing a product like this. At this point, you started to work with us and you started to or continue to work on your project and it's actually driving and running now. Yeah. We had a huge breakthrough a few months ago. Your son Peter stopped by and gave us a bit of a tutorial on a Model S we were having issues with in the shop. We got deep into the high voltage interlock circuitry. Okay. Which is critical to ele the all electric vehicles at this point to keep them safe. If there's any issue with the HVIL, the car will not drive. 
the high voltage system is shut down, disengaged to prevent electrocution. It got me thinking in that moment, that tutorial with Peter, could there be some issue with our HVIL in the prototype? Sure enough, my brother came out, we went through every single wire through the high voltage junction box, the DC to DC converter, checked all the fuses, they were all good, and then we noticed a high voltage orange cable going into the heating element, which is part of the whole HVAC unit. We plugged that in, nothing happened. Then we plugged in a smaller cable, another harness that controls that component, and boom, we were able to drive. <laughs> That'd be great. <laughs>